blazing through the interwebs like the delivery truck that don't move for nobody in the middle of a narrow Vietnamese road out in the boonies. It's DIA, or Dudes in Asia. What up, dude maniacs? As always, this is David Hader. And this is David Wynn, a.k.a. One Kick Noogie. Today we're hitting you with episode 35. We've got another great interview lined up for you. Yeah, we've been owing our, uh, owing our listeners an interview. It's been a while, Ben. <laughs> It has, man, it has, you know, but all the people we interview, they're also like busy professionals, you know, we really appreciate their time. That's right. And, you know, I feel like usually a lot of people are just one man podcasts and maybe they interview somebody. So it's like two people schedules, you know, but then we got two people going and then a third guest, you know. Correct. Yeah. It takes a little bit of coordination. Yeah. Yeah. But for uh, future references, we got some people lined up. So uh, for the next uh, few, uh, next few months, we got some people. So we'll be on schedule for that. Yes, indeed. What's new, bro? Man, uh, same old stuff, dude. You know, just kicking it with my exercise stuff. I started writing that blog. That should be up pretty soon. Oh, nice, nice. But yeah, like uh, last week, I messed around a little bit, you know. But it kind of happens. Like I work some overtime, so you don't really come home, you know. Like staying out late, and then you kind of get up, and you're like, eh, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, just got back to it this week, you know. Mm. I mean getting on that jump rope i think almost hit almost like 300 man it did about like 250 in a row how much that how much time i don't know i always just put on like 20 minutes and then just go for it nice. you know yeah like but a, then what i do you counted is you, I, you count each jump or is there just kind of like a counter yeah, on the on the jump rope i count each jump okay yeah. okay i have like a pretty bare bones jump rope man it was like highly rated on the japanese amazon nice you know nice. yeah so i just go for it dude so just yeah. to re- refresh our viewers, you are doing like jump rope and like uh, like push ups and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, just all kinds of stuff. I'll write a blog about it later. Okay, you okay, know. okay. Yeah, but yeah, that's about it for that. And then uh, other than that, getting ready to move out, you know, mm-hmm. still clearing out all my stuff, selling some things, you know. And then I feel like the big thing is just kind of planning out the rest of my time, dude. Like a lot of people are like, hey, I want to hang out with you. I'm just like, hey, this is how much time I have. And they're like, oh, crap. And it's like, all right. It's like six weeks, <laughs> Six weeks? Yeah, basically, man. About like six, seven more weeks. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. But then the thing, too, is that we move out like on a Friday. Mm-hmm. And so it's like we work like all week. And then like Thursday is like the first cleaning check. And then Friday is like the final cleaning check. And you're still working and those so, things? Uh, not really on the Thursday and the Friday, okay. you know, but Monday through Wednesday we're working, yeah, you know? Okay. And it'd be nicer, like maybe move down to like a Monday or a Tuesday. Cause then you get the weekend to clean right before you move. But yeah, we don't have that luxury, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. That's about it, man. What's good with you, dude? Man. Uh, very similar to you. I've also been on my exercise, uh, routine. Um, get up about four, four thirty. sometimes even early. like if I, if my body wakes up, I'm just going to go straight to it. Even if it's like 3 a.m. Um, Damn. Yeah, I did that like two days ago. I just got up at 3 a.m. It's like, oh, it's 3. Screw it. Let's go straight to it. And then I do about 20 minutes of meditation and then kind of just go to my workout of the day. So that might be uh, uh, like jogging. I did like seven kilometers on – I did seven kilometers yesterday. Or I'm just doing some yoga to kind of stretch it out or just whatever it may be. And then I do pretty much like a hundred push ups, hundred sit ups, hundred squats every day. And wow, go from there. right on, man. And then I uh, started some kickboxing and boxing. So, I mean, Muay Thai and boxing. Yeah, it's been cool, man. I've been really enjoying it. I'm surprisingly that despite like me really increasing my whole workout stuff, I'm only averaging like five hours a night, but I don't feel tired. Mm, that can happen sometimes, dude. Yeah. I thought for sure I'd be like completely burned out and then like need like seven, eight hours, but I'm like <laughs> wake up's like I actually feel okay. Let's go. You know? <laughs> yeah, maybe like you're sleeping less, but you're getting like higher quality yeah, sleep. Yeah, oh something. it's definitely higher quality sleep. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, cool, man. Yeah, it's been good. Um, what else is new? Uh work has been great. Uh I just so I pretty much have the flexibility to work on what I really want to work on. VC gave me that flexibility, so I've been uh, just just really figuring out this whole sports community in Vietnam and uh, 
been networking, talked to some people, dude. I actually like up my game and actually wrote this whole letter in Vietnamese, dude. <laughs> oh, right on, man. Yeah, so, good times. Yeah, it was challenging though. Like I really didn't want to do it, <laughs> but I was like, man, I don't want to outsource this. I don't want to tell anyone to do it. I just gotta like, just learn and just like like man through it and then just figure it out. So yeah, it's been cool, man. Right on, man. But you know that's, that's how you do things, man. You you take something you don't want to do, make it happen, then you learn from it. You know? Exactly, exactly, my man. Exactly. Like I had, I had a little resistance in my head, but eventually it's like, dude, just shut up and do it. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. This is Dudes in Asia. We have our special guest, Kenny, in Vietnam with us. Say what's up, Kenny. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, chilling, dog. Yeah, Kenny. we chilling. Kenny. So then, uh, what, what's up, Kenny? Saying Kenny in the house. Okay, nice. <laughs> Anyways, I know you well enough, but uh, could you introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and on your little experience from uh, U.S. to Asia? Absolutely. My name is Kenny. Uh, I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. Uh, I pretty much grew up in Seattle my entire life. <clears throat> my family is from uh, South Korea. So, you know, I make frequent trips uh, throughout, you know, from Seattle to Korea since I was really young. Uh, yeah, I uh, uh, used to work uh, for Amazon. Uh, so my, my kind of domain expertise is in the supply chain and technology space. Uh, so I've been, uh, there's, get their shipment uh, from point A to point B uh, and make sure, uh, you know, they get it on time pretty much. Um, I, I worked for Amazon for a little over four years and then I transitioned uh, into uh, building my own logistic technology company as I saw a lot of opportunity for, you know, help augment the professionals on automation and, um, and bring more transparency to the industry. So I did that for a while, um, <clears throat> went through, uh, uh, you know, from venture capitalists, uh, eventually uh, went through a merger. Um, I got really burnt out um, and I was at a point in life where, uh, you know, I was able to transition to uh, pack my bags and fly over to Southeast Asia. Yeah, that's um, cool. to, yeah, so Vietnam happened to be my first country uh, I decided to visit. And long story short, um, Vietnam just once, and I ended up coming back 10 times throughout my uh, four-month journey. Wow, that's <laughs> nice, man. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so you've been to Vietnam, right? And you said you went to Korea a bunch of times. Have you been to any other spots in Asia? Yeah, so uh, I when I was on my kind of four-month Southeast uh, Asian journey went to six countries. So Vietnam, uh, I stopped by South Korea, Japan, uh, Taiwan, Singapore, and uh, Thailand. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess uh, you chose Vietnam to live, right? But like, what are some of the other spots that you like the most? I, I really enjoyed uh, both Bangkok and Thailand, or sorry, Bangkok and uh, Singapore. So, <clears throat> um, uh, you know. I would say, you know, 60, you know, about 80% of my trip was for pleasure and then 20% was really trying to explore opportunities in the space. Me being in the startups, you know, startup space uh, in Seattle, I was, I was very curious and interested in uh, understanding what other people in this region were, were doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I, I, I met a lot of entrepreneurs in both Bangkok and Singapore and gave me a broader perspective on you know, how the business culture and entrepreneurship uh, functions uh, here in this region. Um, you know, a lot different than the U.S., um, different and unique in a way um, that gives this region an edge um, in terms of their own entrepreneurship ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so... You said you got the most kind of like eye-opening stuff in Thailand and in Singapore, right? So how did you end up in Vietnam? <laughs> Yeah, so I would say Vietnam is probably the most eye-opening. Okay. And then Thailand and Singapore are are the kind of follow-ups. Okay. Um, but you know the reason why I ended up in Vietnam <clears throat> was uh, that's where I met most of my kind of close networks here in this region. Mm -hmm. Vietnam itself, you know, it just had a different vibe compared to Bangkok and Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, people here um, seem to be hungry. Uh, I mean, the entrepreneur and startup ecosystem is still relatively small 
but the folks that are in that space are, you know, very driven and motivated. Mm. And I think that's one of the things that really differentiates Vietnam from, you know, some of the other Southeast Asian countries and also Seattle, you know, it, it, it was just a different mindset compared to Seattle. That's one of the things that really attracted me. Um, but I would say, you know, the reason why I'm here is I actually met my wife, you know, throughout my <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that, 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 that has a big, uh, you know, impact on why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that that makes a big it. difference. Same thing for me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing for me. All right, so let's yeah. get married, but I'm not living in Vietnam, though. That's a deal breaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm the fish that got caught in that net, so. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah, so how long have you been living here? So uh, I've been living here for a little over a year and a half. Okay. Um, my wife and I moved uh, from – my wife and I moved in together in Vietnam in 18. Uh, prior to that, uh, she was in uh, Dubai and Uganda. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know, we decided to kind of pack our bags. I packed my bags from Seattle. She packed her bags from Dubai. And then, you know, we decided to kind of go back home and, uh, you know, pursue our relationship. Oh. And then, uh, yeah, and then we ended up getting engaged and um, got married, you know, shortly after that. That's Congrats cool. again, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask another question because you've been there for about a year and a half now and like, you know, you've got your business, you know, entrepreneurship, all that going. Like, are you having uh, any difficulties like, you know, in personal life, like adapting or any uh, difficulties in your business? Like, how's it been going for you? Yeah. So, um, I've been, uh, I, I, I have my own consulting agency for clients, both in the U S and here in, uh, you know, in Vietnam as well. Uh -huh. Um, you know, I, I've been trying to scale it and productize my kind of consulting business. Um, and I think, um, you know, I, I, I've been, uh, I made this transition into turning it into, you know, my own startup just recently. And I think one of the biggest challenges um, in Vietnam is the startup ecosystem is very premature mm. and not established. So figuring it out, right? Mm -hmm, uh, and, yeah. and that goes both ways for entrepreneurs and for investors. Yeah, definitely. I, like yeah, I can see how like on one point it's like they don't really have the bad habits yet, but then on the other hand, it's like the, it's, I don't know. They still don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> they don't know. You know? Exactly. Yeah, they don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's pros and cons, you know, the pros, especially in Vietnam is, you know, there aren't really many established conglomerates for you guys like Vin group, you know, uh, Vin group and, you know, some other folks, uh, you know, in, in the, in the, uh, uh, you know, technology business as well opens things up for, I think, Vietnamese entrepreneurs, uh, you know, to, you know, establish their own business, establish their own standards and, uh, you know, turn to an idea, an idea into a startup and then the startup into, you know, a long-term business. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, the, the tool sets I think are starting to, uh, appear, but I think, you know, for most entrepreneurs, you know, it's very, especially as a foreigner, um, since, you know, the regulatory environment here in Vietnam is a lot different than it is in the U S you know, it, you know, it is a challenging re regulatory environment, you know, mm. for foreigners Yeah, you have to be very careful on, you know, how you structure a business. Um, and you know, the, the other problem is here, uh, most of the decision makers in Vietnam, you know, you have those who are, who, who are both foreign educated, who can speak English. Uh -huh. uh, and then you have those who don't speak English at all. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a huge opportunity if, if you are able to speak Vietnamese um, as well. You know, I think overall there, there's, there's, pro, there's good things and bad, um, but I would say overall I'm, I'm pretty neutral. Uh, I have a neutral perspective. Uh, about about the uh, ecosystem here. It's a very interesting breed of uh, ecosystem here, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like you got to pick your poison almost. That's yeah. Funny. So, you know, I, I think overall, you know, my, my journey has been, you know, I've learned a lot. I've, you know, throughout my kind of consulting journey here in Vietnam, I've, I've consulted with a lot of local companies. Um, so there's a lot of mid-sized companies, you know, companies that do revenue maybe between you know, 10 mil to 50 mil or any companies under a hundred mil mm, yeah. um, that are 
trying to expand, you know, get that local expertise, uh, you know, to get them to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, it's still big money in Vietnam, though, man. You're doing all right. Huh? It is. It is. Uh, you know, the, the FDI is, uh, you know, it's, it's it's off the charts. You know, you have a lot of Korean, Japanese, and Chinese companies investing here. And, you know, I think, you know, the, the FDI is what's really, uh, you know, huge growth, I think, in this region. Uh, so Nice, nice. Yeah, well, you've been doing business out there for a while, yeah. Like, have you noticed it's changing like pretty rapidly, like since you've been there? Or is it kind of like staying the same as it was yeah, like a year and a half ago? I, I think it's definitely changing very rapidly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, one example is, right? Uh, I think when I first came to Vietnam, uh, you know, people just started, you know, the banks started launching, you know, e-payments through Zalo Pay, uh, Momo. Uh, and, and some of the other platforms. Uh, fast forward now, you know, I think uh, the other day costs more than uh, in USD and e-payment transactions in Q1 2019. Oh, wow. So, you know, how velocity of, you know, some of these uh, and technologies, uh, you know, coming into the daily lives of, you know, the local people here. That's cool, man. Yeah. How about uh, how about living wise? Is there any difficulties you see from shifting from Seattle to over here? Well, um, you know, I definitely don't miss the rain in Seattle. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'm not here though. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'll be honest. You know, I, I think uh, the transition from Seattle to Vietnam from a uh, from a kind of a housing and living perspective has been great. Yeah. Um, you know, it is it is a lot more affordable in Seattle. Seattle is. Creeping up there with, uh, you know, San Francisco's, uh, you know, unreasonable housing prices. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they don't have like six pools in like one apartment complex in Seattle. So <laughs> I definitely take advantage of that. <laughs> That's cool, man. How's the weather besides the raininess? Like, is the humidity bothering you or traffic? <laughs> you know, it, it took a while for me to adjust. So I'm not really used to humidity. <laughs> yeah, Korea. You know, I traveled to Korea during the summer. It gets pretty damn humid in, in Seoul, but not 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 to to you know Vietnam's degree. You know, yeah. <laughs> it took me, I think, six months to get used to the weather. So I'm not, you know, yeah. Thank God for air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny for me in Japan. Like I can go through the the winter without heat, but I would like not survive without AC. You know. <laughs> I just be sweating all over everything, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, you know. Yeah, there's nothing that cures like heat, man. Like you know, if it's like too cold, you just put on layers. But if it's too hot, you're just done for. <laughs> yeah. I told you yeah. what my my friend said right. So he jacked up the AC in the office, and some people are like, "It's cold, turn it down." He's like, "You know what? If you're too cold, you can put on a sweater. But if it gets too hot, I will take my pants off." yeah Yeah, that's that logic man yeah (laughs) yeah i mean i i I can't really complain i mean it's summer here all year round season right yeah Yeah. i know there's an exception since they have four season oh Um, really that's cool yeah they have pretty drastic weather changes up there yeah they do and it's and, you know, like, you know, on that same note, um, you know, I, I, I managed to, you know, travel around throughout Vietnam. I mean, not many cities, but, you know, I, I've spent some time living in the north in Hanoi for a couple months for work, you know, traveled to Sapa, Ninh Binh, um, pretty much, you know, all the kind of beautiful destinations that you hear about in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things that really makes Vietnam stand out is, uh, how beautiful the geography is here in this in this region, and when you look at Vietnam, you say, "Oh wow, you know it's, it's really narrow and long." Um, but you know because you know Vietnam's, you know how 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 the topology is structured, uh, it gives it a very unique, uh, I think, experience. You know, if you were to kind of go top down from north to mm-hmm. down to south, there's um, you know different food. Uh, and, and, and I can see why a lot of to Vietnam, you know, and, and kind of, you know, come here as a vacation destination, different experiences. 
And I think that's what's really great about this country is, uh, you know, just, you know, people in general are, and the food is amazing here and in different uh, experiences you can have throughout Vietnam uh, just because the country's quite big. Yeah, it's very true, man. Like thinking about the, you know, big cities, Ho Chi Minh and like Hanoi is just, you know, got the capital and all that. And then you got mountains into Latin beaches like you know jungles it's crazy man yeah You're like the biggest definitely. cave in the world too <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I, I have yet to go there so I, I i really want to check that out i really want to check that out too <laughs> <laughs> for sure man yeah so uh i guess we could almost wrap things up i guess one final question is uh you have any advice for people who are thinking about coming out to asia for an extended stay or possibly doing business out here yeah um I guess it really depends, but um, I would say um, anyone who's coming to Southeast Asia, established markets like Central Asia or, you know, I, I always advise them to, um, you know, a lot of people have different preferences uh, and, you know, life here is different from the U.S., right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I think my advice is always keep an open mind because um, there will be a lot of culture shock in being Asian American and you know, I, I know the Korean culture fairly well. Um, you know, there are still some things I, I say, wow, that's pretty interesting. Um, you know, at least in Vietnam and some of the Southeast Asian countries. As long as you're open-minded and, you know, you're curious, um, I think, you know, that itself will help guide a lot of people uh, to better understanding, you know, what in this region uh, and, you know, what value they can provide to the community if they decide to go that route. That does it for another fresh, fresh episode of Dudes in Asia. We want to give a big thanks to Kenny as well as our other guests who helped make this show successful. I learned something new from each of them, you know, so it's always a pleasure having them on. Yeah, thank you, Kenny. That was an awesome interview. Uh, even, uh, you know, the fact that uh, he lives here is still a good insight from a different perspective. Anyways, this is Wood Kick Nui signing out. Be sure to check out our blog at dudesinasia.blogspot.com or hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash dudesinasia. If you want to follow me on Twitter, search for at David Hader. That's at D-A-V-I-D-H-A-R. Peace out. Peace out.